This video is sponsored by Squarespace. The very best street photos tell you a lot of different things. They could be funny, they could be complex, they could be simple, they could be abstract. Whatever the special moment that is caught within that frame is making the photo interesting, and that's what's grabbing your attention. What a good street photograph doesn't do is scream, this is a photo. If the characteristics of the hardware are more interesting than the moment itself, then I think we've missed the point. I believe the 85mm lens could be ruining your street photography, and more precisely, hindering your ability to improve as a street photographer. In this video, I want to share what might seem like a controversial opinion, but please hear me out because I want to also discuss why and how the 85mm might work for some people. This conversation is specifically about street photography. I don't want this to be about product photography, portraits, sports, or landscape photography. I want this to be about traditional, and in my opinion, skillful street photography. That dreamy bokeh, beautiful compression and subject focus is one of the reasons that when we first use the 85mm, we actually think we've taken an impressive image. But what's really happening is that we're impressed with the technical aspects and the details that the hardware has generated for us, not our ability to capture a compelling story. I want to share a clip now from fellow street photographer and friend James Parsons. James will now break down the specifics of how our eyes actually work when we look at an image. Mike and I are always talking about different techniques within street photography. And we both agree that using long focal lengths and low apertures or low numbered apertures isn't good for your photography in the long run. Our eyes are drawn to contrast and shooting at long focal lengths and low f-stops means that we create high contrast within detail. Most people think of contrast as a difference between areas of bright bright and dark dark and it's the proximity of the two next to each other which creates high I guess, differences, and that's where our eyes are typically drawn. And this type of detail contrast is injected with the most potent steroids known to man when you use a long focal length at a low aperture, like f2.8, f1.8, f1.4. And you know what I mean, when the, the subject is pin sharp, but the background is blurred to oblivion, and you can't make out a single detail within it. Your gear creates this look not you as a photographer. Okay, so I am aware that at this point in this video, there is potential for some people to be triggered by maybe what we're saying. And that obviously isn't the point of this video. The purpose of this is to discuss photography technique and how we can improve as street photographers. So let's keep trying to do that. Let's look at what happens when we use a 28mm or a 35mm lens. What we don't have is fancy bokeh or compression. What we actually have is probably closer to what our eyes would see in the first place. These wider focal lengths are actually a little bit more mundane, but perhaps closer to what we would see in real life, which makes noticing and capturing these frames even harder. You're relying way more on how you compose the image and what you decide to fill the frame with. When I use a wider focal length, I have to incorporate my environment more into the frame, naturally. That does make things a little bit more difficult, but that also adds context, and context could lead to an even better story. And here's the crux of my point. If you can notice and capture those everyday opportunities for a street photo and do it successfully, that's the skill we're not relying on the compression of the 85mm lens to create a good image. We're relying on our own ability as photographers to create something out of nothing. And in my opinion, someone walking down the street at f1.4 isn't street photography, it's lazy. I want to now share a few images that I really love from some excellent photographers and give a little breakdown to what I think makes their work so appealing. One of my favorite photographers right now is Jeremy Page. 
also known as eaten by flowers on Instagram. Talk about one in a million. His images are like stills from a fiction movie. I remember when I first came across his work and I couldn't believe this was all candid. If I am correct, Jeremy Page uses a 35 millimeter for the majority of his work. This wider lens gives us great context of his environment and also allows him to get pretty close to his subjects, making for some more intense scenes. Alex Webb is an absolute legend to the street photography community and the photography industry in general, so I couldn't not mention his work when talking about this. Alex Webb is a master of creating perfect balance between his subjects whilst maintaining a great composition. This is talent on another level. He captures scenes that on first glance look very complex, but somehow manages to snap a frame within the chaos that is really impressive. I can see and feel the energy in his photographs, which gives me a whole new impression of what that scene was like in real life. I feel like this is candid documentary photography at its absolute finest. I would like to take a moment to share the sponsors of this video, Squarespace. Many of you regular viewers will know I've been using Squarespace even before they became supporters of this channel. I really do believe in having a personal space for your work as a photographer. I recently launched a brand new newsletter for my subscribers, which is an exciting new project I'm working on in 2023. I'll be sending weekly emails, sharing a more personal look into my ideas around photography, YouTube, tech, and anything that I find interesting. Squarespace made it super simple for me to create this newsletter page, set up an email campaign, and send out my first email to the subscribers in just a few hours. Not only am I using Squarespace to host this new community and send emails, but it's also the place I host my portfolio of work, create blogs, and sell digital products. Go to squarespace.com for your free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Mike Chudley to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now let's share some reasons why the 85mm does work. I even own one, and it's popular for a reason, so let's change up the pace a little bit and talk about some good reasons why the 85mm could work. You don't bruise the scene. A famous Robert Kappa quote is ingrained in my mind. If your photos are not good enough, you're not close enough. However, when a photographer is roaming around the streets and maybe getting a little bit too close for comfort, perhaps affecting people's behaviors, you're no longer capturing candid photography. I think at that point, you might just be annoying. So it could be said that if you're not great with a 28 or a 35 or a wide focal length in general, that it might be easier for you to take a step back, use a longer lens like an 85 millimeter and take your photo from a little bit further back. But obviously this all depends on the behavior of the photographer. Like I said earlier, when we first pick up an 85 millimeter lens, we're impressed by its technical aspects the bokeh and the compression. But what happens if you're a little bit more experienced and you don't shoot with just those ideas in mind? Because obviously there are photographers out there taking incredible images with an 85 millimeter lens. But I think it's because they're honing in on the components of a great image, of a great story, rather than the components that the hardware delivers. Adam Ramjean, a fellow London street photographer, actually shared some recent images that I thought were fantastic and they were taken on an 85mm. Adam shared this little series on Twitter and it caught my eye. I love how they look because I'm drawn to the people's reactions and the emotions shown, which I imagine is exactly the reason Adam took these. They work because they're good images, despite the focal length. Now, I also know that Adam has a great eye for street photography. He would notice these moments and emotions and details, whether he had his camera in his hands or not. Saul Leiter is a very famous street photographer and in some cases used a telephoto lens up to 150 mil. His work is beautifully done with a lot of detail and color, but I can confidently say he acquired the skill before using the hardware in his favor. In fact, I would go as far as saying that the 85 millimeter in the correct hands could enable people to get an image they otherwise couldn't. But let's remember, is the image good because of what's in the frame or does the compression just look cool? That's up to you to decide. So I thought it'd be pretty ironic for me to make a video hating on the 85 millimeter focal length when in fact I've taken one of my very favorite street photos using that exact lens. So 
I want to throw a photo up on screen now and share with you why I like it so much, even though it is in fact taken at 85 mil. Like I said, this is one of my all time favorites from London. The coincidence and matching gestures between the billboard and passerby is just magic. I also really like the composition. I think it's pretty clean and well balanced. I will also add for the sake of everything I've mentioned in this video that the compression or low aperture isn't any of the reasons it works. I'm shooting against a wall so the compression isn't impressive and I think it was shot at 5.6 or at least f4 so no fancy bokeh to distract our eyes. If I am being incredibly boastful that image is just an example of a purely coincidental moment that I was there and able to capture which for me is why street photography is so much fun. As I've dived deeper and deeper into street photography, I'm more and more impressed with scenes that look really intentional, but also feel effortless. Subjects and focal points and details all over the frame, and maybe I even have more questions than I do answers. But it's those images that keep me coming back to look at them. And then when I make note of these images and how they were taken, rarely is it with an 85 millimeter lens and a wide open aperture. Let's throw this back to James now, who has got some very practical and helpful ideas for capturing better street photos. And I think these points will be really helpful. What other techniques can we use to draw our eye to the subject that isn't reliant purely on our kit, but is actually the skill of a photographer? So we've got areas of tonal contrast, where we've got bright elements next to dark elements. That creates high contrast between the two, which draws our eye to the subject. You could have highly saturated colors. You could have patterns of colors. We can have patterns of shape. You could have like telephone pole, telephone pole, telephone pole, person. And then your eye is drawn to the subject that breaks that pattern. You can also place your subject within a frame and then that creates a nice little border around them, makes it very obvious what you're taking a photo of. You can also start playing around with the shapes and elements that point towards your subject. And by playing around with all these different techniques, you are able to guide the eye to the thing that you want. There's more layers to it, it's more interesting to look at, it's harder to take, so you are more satisfied when you take those images. Yeah, along with all of the story elements that Mike is talking about, it's a combination of both the techniques and also the story that really makes images worth looking at. So my question to myself, and perhaps you watching this video, next time I pick up an 85 millimeter lens, am I picking it up because it's easy and I can stand across the street? Or am I maybe being lazy? Am I relying on the gimmicks of technology rather than my own ability as a street photographer? I hope that makes sense. <laughs> My head is fried um, and I haven't done one of these in a long time. Usually I'll do many, 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 many iterations. Um, probably why it takes me so long to do a single video. But yeah, hopefully that's what you want. Let me know if you want me to reshoot anything. And um, yeah, thank you very much for asking me to be a part of this. Big love. <laughs>